And this is my presentation for Cold Space Rescue U19. So a little bit about myself. I am from Club Automatica in Raffles Institution. And last year I took part in RoboCup under the RCJ Soccer Lightweight category. And this year I've been doing uh, Cold Space Rescue First Steps and Cold Space Rescue. So the Cold Space Rescue Challenge can basically be split into accomplishing three main objectives. The first of them is obstacle avoidance. So that's avoiding running into traps, uh, crashing into walls and leaving the field, as all of those will cause you to lose points and waste time. The second is object targeting, which is basically how you plan for the robot to collect the randomly spawned colors as quickly as possible and to complete certain uh, combinations like RRBBCC and RBC for super plus and super objects. And the last is navigation to the deposits and super plus, which basically depends on how quickly the robot can pathfind to a specific given coordinate. Hence, I will talk about how I tried to accomplish each of these objectives in order. To accomplish the objectives of avoiding traps, walls, and leaving the field, I created an obstacle avoidance algorithm which only uses the position sensor and compass. So by applying thresholding and convolution to a, an image of the map, I can generate 2D arrays which simulate vectors that repel the robot away from danger, such as traps, walls, and the edge of the field. So when traveling towards danger, the vectors corresponding to the robot's position in the, in the array will slow down the robot and push it away. This achieves reliable obstacle avoidance, which only uses the position sensor and compass. Uh, however, as a failsafe, in case it doesn't work, the robot still uses ultrasonic sensors for proportional wall avoidance. So for object targeting, the first thing we need to decide are what are the desired colors which the robot should target. So at the start, we're thinking of RRBBCC, uh, which will give you a super plus object, which is a lot of points. However, if it turns out that uh, certain colors are very hard to find, then RRBBCC is no longer a good option because it could spend the entire run trying to look for the RBBCC combo and just failing. So uh, in that case, it will get zero points. So the solution that I found for this was to modify the target amount of each color which the robot is targeting for. So for example, if it finds very few red objects and a lot of black objects, then it will start targeting three black objects instead of two. And the result of this is that uh, if, if a certain color is depleted on the map, then it will still uh, it will give up on RBBCC and continue collecting as many points as possible. After this, the map is split into zones which depend on which, which color of object is spawned in that specific area. And the robot will target zones with the most color it needs. So for example, if it is looking for three cyan objects and it doesn't have any currently, then it will go to a zone that spawns cyan objects. Once it enters those zones, it will move randomly to increase the chances of collection. So what does move randomly mean? It means that the robot will basically only turn in order to avoid obstacles and otherwise it will, it will just basically dash forward. So uh, this creates a rather good spread of random movement so that it will not usually not cover the same place twice. If the robot spends too much time searching in one zone, then it will automatically target the other zones instead. So this prevents it from looking for a certain color of object in one zone forever, which might cause it to get zero points in the long run. So finally, for navigation to deposit zones and super plus objects, I find that this image captures the problem best. So in this scenario, the robot is unable to directly target the deposit area simply based on the angle between the deposit's coordinates and its own coordinates due to the U-shaped wall that's blocking its path. The solution I found for this was to expand the zone system that we use for object targeting. So firstly, areas with deposits and super plus objects are also added as zones. And before ta directly targeting the coordinates of the deposit zone or super plus objects, the robot will first target to exit its current zone and then enter the target zone. So for example, in the previous image, the robot would 
first attempt to exit the bonus zone through the bottom left or bottom right corners before continuing to directly target the deposit area. So by doing this, it will effectively get past the, the long wall. So it will eliminate the chances of the robot being stuck uh, targeting the deposit forever due to the long restrictive walls that are common. So in terms of implementation, the vector maps that I used for my obstacle avoidance were done in Python with the OpenCV library, while the rest of the code was programmed in C and compiled into the DLL file for the simulator. Uh, while most of my problems were ironed out since uh, RCAP, one main issue I faced this time around was that the super plus objects would be rather close to swamps or traps. So when the robot was targeting super plus objects, because of the obstacle avoidance, the swamps or traps would repel the robot away from the, ob from the super plus objects, wasting time. My solution to this was to disable obstacle avoidance when the robot was close to the super object so that it wouldn't repel the robot away and cause it to miss the object. For learning experience, I learned how to optimize my Python code to prevent map generation from taking too long. So at the start, it took nearly 20 minutes, which, was, which is a lot of time to generate the vector maps. I also learned how to program with more complex obstacles, such as swamps, uh, signal loss zones, and having more walls than usual. So these are problems that I didn't face in the first steps category. I would like to thank my fellow schoolmates who worked on this challenge alongside me, as well as my teachers in charge and my coach Kenneth for guiding us. In terms of future improvements, I would like to estimate the position of the robot based on its orientation and velocity, which are always known. And another interesting strategy would be to compile multiple screenshots of the map, which would mean spawning objects uh, numerous times and overlaying them on top, of, on top of each other to estimate where more objects may spawn. Okay, that is it. Thank you.